Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. I have a really hot GMT release for you today. It is our most affordable GMT to date. Uh, it's not a diver, which probably, which really helps with that, less parts and stuff. But with the advent of the NH34 and then the Miyota 9075, uh, we certainly saw, uh, you know, a need in the Islander lineup to add some GMTs. So uh, today we're introducing to you the Melville. Uh, Melville is a town here on Long Island. I actually lived there for about a dozen years or so, not long after I got married. Uh, Walt Whitman Mall is there, uh, Melville the town, named after Herman Melville, the author, novelist, uh, most famous book I'm going to say he wrote would, would be Moby Dick. Uh, would he have a need for a GMT? Well, I guess if he was whaling, maybe he'd navigate by the stars. Probably wouldn't need a GMT, but we're going to check it out on my own wrist. Well, I am wearing our first traveler's GMT with the Miyota 9075. This is the Port Jeff GMT. True traveler's GMT with the jump date function, really cool. And on my other wrist, well, I guess it's another Islander new release from about three weeks ago or so. This is the Green Port, comes in five varieties. It's got that vertical day date arrangement, makes it super easy uh, on the eyes to read and makes for a nice uh, dial, dial balance, dial symmetry. Uh, anyway, let's, um, let's, see, let's see Mr. Melville. And here we go. Say hello, hi to the Islander Melville. It is going to come to you in three snazzy colors. We have a black a gray, and of course a blue, all served up on luscious leather straps. And before I forget, there is an optional three-link bracelet. Is our, it is our BRAC-11. You will see that bracelet on the product pages in case you want to change it up a bit. So uh, these are all going to be, any of them your choice, 269 You know, I was looking recently uh, to see when we kicked this project off a lot of people do ask how long these things take. This one actually was uh, well over a year at this point uh, that we put the original design concept in. Now, it doesn't take a year to make it, but there was a ton of back and forth on these dials. Uh, this is Ryan's uh, hammer dial design, and uh, he wanted to do a GMT that wasn't a dive or something a little bit fancier. Uh, maybe a little more sporty. And the Melville is what came of that idea. So it's a lovely hammered dial finish. And that's what took so much time. Lots of back and forth with the factory, you know, after drawings were done, then actually seeing the result. And every time we do a new dial, you need a new mold and, uh, you know, just wanted to get it right. So you have a beautiful hammered textured finish uh, on the inside of the dial. And then it's also on the outside of the dial. But then where the GMT track is, that 24-hour track, we are just looking at a nice, smooth surface. Really, really sweet. Uh, the blue dial, obviously, well, not obviously, but it is my favorite of the bunch. Awesome orange accents on GMT and the GMT hand. The hands themselves are brushed, as are the indices. Uh, and then... You know, we were discussing how to loom them, and Ryan came up with this idea of outlining the indices. Um, and you'll see when we get to the loom, it's really, really, really cool. It wound up kind of looking Ming-esque, and I will just say that we were not looking to, you know, we were not looking for that, uh, but the result is kind of like that. Uh, but in the daylight, it looks nothing like it. Uh, it's just a really, really fun, sporty GMT watch. Sporty, dressy, I guess both, right? I see a little Grand Seiko in it. Uh, there's a lot going on there. But here's the case from the side. Nice polished and brushed finish. Uh, it is a screw down crown, of course. I haven't even gone over the specs, so let's do that. I'm sorry. I'm getting so, I guess, carried away because I, I do really like the watch. So it is uh, 40 millimeters in diameter. It is 13 13 thick to a slightly domed sapphire crystal with inner AR. It is 47 and a half millimeters on the lug tip to lug tip. It is an exhibition screw down case back, sapphire case back at that. And this might be the first time you're seeing it on an NH movement. We did customize the rotor with the Islander name and done in blue and around the case back a little bit nicer uh, than we have been doing in the past. It does certainly look better. Uh, sapphire glass, uh, the 100 meters of water resistance, the material, after the model number, Islander branding, the movement type, etc. 
So that's the NH34. You can see through the case back. Uh, the lugs are 20 millimeter. So this is a 20 millimeter leather strap that you see here. As I said, we have an optional bracelet should you wish to change up the look just a bit. Very nice, supple leather strap with uh, contrast stitching, regular prong buckle with the Islander logo on it. The watch weighs 84 grams on the strap. It is 100 meters of water resistance. So I'm gonna, I zoomed out, but I'm gonna zoom back in now. It is a screw down crown, so it's fastened down. I'm gonna unscrew it. Uh, it's an NH34 movement, so I can wind it. And that will give me my 40 hours of power reserve. It's a 24 joule hand winding hacking automatic, which means hacking when I pull the crown out at the time, the seconds hand does stop. I can change the time. So I will change it like that. You'll see the GMT hand is revolving with me, which is good, it's supposed to. And the GMT hand will revolve once a day while the hour hand revolves uh, twice a day. Pull it out one click, one direction will change the date, the other direction will change the GMT hand, and they will snap into place in one hour increments. Done plenty of videos on how GMTs work, so you can check them out. The date at the six, nice and balanced, symmetrical, etc., etc. Um, I do want to point out one little, before it moves, one little detail. You can look at the counterbalance of the, there we go, the counterbalance of the seconds hand is actually a hammer. Uh, for the hammer dial, a little Easter egg, you know, from down here, from this far away, you know, you're probably not going to notice it, but when it's nice and up and close, uh, it certainly does make itself seen really nifty. And here you can see the brushing on those hands and then the loom line that's embedded in them. It's, it's so cool. Not sure if I mentioned price. Um, I, I should have if I didn't. Um, any of them are 269 bucks. So that's your blue dial. This is ISL 222. Wait till you see the loom. Here's ISL uh, 255. This is the black dial variant. So it's the same watch. Um, you'll see there are one of them C3 BGW9. We'll, we'll check that out when we get there. Uh, but this one is done in a black hammer. And there you can see it when I rotate it into the light. It, it does play with the light, much like the Northport dial uh, does when you kind of throw it in and out of the light. You get the pattern to emerge. That's how this is going to work as well. Uh, the blue works really well. The black kind of hides it. And you'll, you'll see the gray in a minute. This we've got a red GMT hand, red GMT text, the Islander branding and logo, movement spelled out on the bottom. It's got the same case back. It is a straight black leather strap with matching stitching, not, no, no contrast like you saw in the blue one. So you always got to do a black dial, right? As you know, Ryan and I definitely learned on the last, uh, some of the last releases where we did not do a black dial. You got to do a black all the time. And the last one, certainly not least, uh, let's see, this is ISL uh, 212. This was 222, the black was 255, this is 212. So this is the gray dial, gray hammer dial. And this was the third color. Uh, we knew we wanted to do black, knew we wanted to do blue. And this gray one we kind of hemmed and hawed on a bit. We did some coffee colors and a whole bunch of other stuff. With the green accent, really killer. Green GMT, green GMT hand. Looks really nice. Uh, the hands maintain their legibility. Easy to read on the background of the watch. It does stick out rather well. Great GMT scale. I showed you the logo on the crown before. Again, same case back. This one's going to come serve to you on a gray leather strap with green contrast stitching. Really, really nice. Dig it. Not sure which one I like the best. Probably the blue. This would be a close second. It looks really sweet. Um, this is the Islander Melville. Let's see, let's see what Melville does when the lights go. Like I said, uh, BGW9 and C3, but they look really, really cool. So here's that gray dial with the BGW9. The 12 o'clock is a Tic Tacs. You can see you can also see the cutout at the bottom where the date goes. Uh, the GMT hand is done in green. So black or blue, it doesn't matter. Uh, they both have C3 and then the tip of the GMT hand. And this is BGW9. So here's that blue, blue Melville, blue hammer time. Uh, ISL 222 on my six and a half, six and three quarter inch wrist. Does that not look awesome? Look at that dial come to life. Wow, 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 wow. I really, really like it. There I'm on the strap, like I said, I'm a six and a half, so I think there's a, another hole hiding under there. 
So probably go down to about a six, six and a quarter inch wrist and then up, way up from there. Looks, oh, you know what, some guys, sometimes you guys like me to go above the bone as well. I realize I'm wearing on my right wrist, but as a lefty, it doesn't really matter to me. I guess I wear two watches, so it certainly doesn't matter to me, but there you go. And that's gonna do it for us. This has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you the new Islander Melville GMT. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Questions, comments, anything else you want to say, you can put it down below. I'll be sure to address it as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.